So to use our key store, we're going to add this configuration now to our config. We're going to tell it where the keys are on disk. There it is, Zarf keys. We're going to say which is the current active kid for generating tokens. And then we're going to say what the issuer is going to be, which is service project for, for these tokens. You can see here in the original project, there's also the vault <laughs> configuration for some of that craziness. Okay, let's come back. Here we go. So we're going to be pointing to disk to read those keys. Fine. And then... We're not doing vault. We need this. Let's see how this works now. So we're going to have our auth config. I don't have a database yet. Our key lookup is that key store that implements the interface, so we're good. And then we have our auth in place using that auth config. Sweet. Now, we have our auth, but we have no place to put it just yet because we haven't implemented um, anything yet that's going to use it like our middleware and stuff. So we're going to have to pass this around a little bit when we're ready. So I'm going to leave this here and let this stay sort of red at the moment. But remember, I like these big, long run files because I could see the different things that we're doing. OK, key store in place. And we have an auth. Now, let me do this while I remember as well, since we're going to have to get this working. In the Docker file now, I'm going to have to make sure this was before we could embed, or I just don't remember. I want to make sure that we copy the keys into our image as well, so they're there. If I, I just remembered that. So that's the part we can get rid of if I do the embedding, right? I can just embed the keys into the binary, um, and we'd be there. But this is going to be fine for where we are now. I'm not going to make that change. OK. Let's talk about middleware now. So business v1 mid new file auth.go. There's two middlewares that we need to implement, one for authentication, one for um, authorization. Oops, sorry. Uh, mid auth. So let's do each one sort of separately here. They're not really big. Actually, I could just bring it in because they're just not big. Let's just break it down. Oops. All right. So I've got an error coming out of here called error invalid ID. We'll see where we use that. I'll be honest with you, my brain um, finds it interesting that that's coming out of the mid package, but we'll see where that's being used. Here's the, uh, here's the middleware for authentication. It's basically these lines of code here. So we're going we're gonna to pass in auth like we did with the logging. We pass in auth so we have it through closures. We can call authenticate out of that auth package. We can tell it where it's going to get the token. That's why we parse it. And then if we get the claims back, we set those claims back into the context in case the handler for some reason needs it. But again, I would want to understand why we're now doing Go logic against claims. And then we can call the handler. So that's it. It uses that. Right after authenticate, then, we'd want to do authorize. We can see that authorize is a little bit more complex. The first thing we do is we get the claims out of the context. So authentication did that, so we have them there. So here's a reason why we also needed get claims, because the authorized middleware wants to pull them out. You can see that I'm missing a function from the web package called param that knows how to pull information off of the, um, the route, that URL that we passed. We're going to have parameters there for the user ID. Now, you can see here, this is where I'm parsing the user ID off of any URL that we're going to implement, which we haven't implemented, and setting it. And then I'm calling authorize 
with that user ID, the rule, the claims, et cetera. So why don't we just add that web param just to have it. Where did I put that? Oh, I put that in request. Now I haven't added request to our web framework yet because we haven't really implemented a handler yet that does any sort of data validation. So I think what I'm just gonna do is steal this for now because I don't wanna add more in this class than what we need at any given time. And we haven't really worked on request yet. So let's just add that here. The tree mux has that special function to pull information out of the URL. So we're just gonna do that. And when we get to the core user package, some of this will make more sense, but what we're doing is getting the user ID um, when there is an auth related sort of URL. Okay, and then we call authorize and then we go. So here's our middleware, right? I mean, pretty cool. And right now, all user IDs authorized. Remember that we added that function, but we commented out any calls to a database. So we've got authorize, we've got authenticate. In order to use these, we need that auth. Okay, great. Now, let's go back here, because if you remember, this is where we've been adding our middleware, right? We wanna be able to add it at a route level. So I could tell you this already, that at the API config, I know that we're gonna to need to bring in the auth, which now means that on this config here, Let's see where we do that. Here's the config. This is where we can attach that auth. Remember I keep talking about, let's not hide things. Let's know where everything gets constructed and we pass it through the app. You're seeing that now. We constructed the auth up there. We're gonna, con we're gonna configure it into this API mux config. You might be saying, Bill, how come you don't have, say a factory function for this config? I don't know why, when it comes to config types, this is the way I like doing it. Now, if you did have a function though, what would be nice is you added a new parameter to the function and now you get a syntax error, right? And you're like, oh, here are all the places where we have an API config. When you do it my way, we add a field, the compiler isn't there to help you, that you're missing a place to do it. So just, just as a side note, but for configs, for some reason, I don't like, even if they get large, I don't like having a factory function for them. But there's value in that, as you can imagine. Okay, so now the auth is being passed in to API MUX. What that now means is that we, we're gonna have that auth as well through our inter router add interface. So it's gonna be there, sweet. Let's go back to our hack for a second. We have this um, hack function that's working, that's fine, but let's go to the routes. Hmm, let's go to the routes. What I would like to do is set up um, a new sort of route that can test this authentication, but we've got to attach the middleware here, right? We've got to attach the middleware. Now, my guess is um, I shouldn't have to look hard just as a spot check here. Um, that I've got, yep, what I expected. All right. So let's play with this for a second. Here I'm only using authentication. I am shocked I don't see under, uh, this is what I want to use. Let's steal some of this and play with it a little bit. Okay, now you could also notice that because we didn't need it at the time, um, I didn't pass this in at the time, but we're gonna need that config. Mm. So you could see here, now that we need config, I'm gonna need another config type. So let's do that. Cool. We're not doing database yet. 
And I don't really need loggers, so let's not do that. So our routes API here now, it's gonna have to ask for a config. So we can get to that auth. And you can see here I can have authentication, I can have an authorize, which would just be, let's just do that one. You have to be an admin. That's a cool one to play with here. And then essentially, we have to do this in that order again, right? Rule M. So now we're gonna construct, um, or we're gonna get these um, middleware functions for authentication and have to be an admin only. And now we can apply that middleware directly to this one route. So hack will always work, but if we don't pass a token into hack auth and that token doesn't say you're an admin, that should start failing. Now, if you think about it though, I added the new error type, didn't I? So before I fix that syntax errors here, I wanna go back to my errors. Because I'm not handling the new auth error type here, am I? No, not at all. Let's go back and look at our middleware for error handling. And you can see there is a case here. to see if an auth error is coming through. Because the middleware will return an error back to this middleware here, the auth middleware. So now if we get an auth error, again we're using is, we can send that 401, not authorized. Cool, I love having the central place for all the error handling. We could just bring it back into this error middleware. Now this is complaining because we need to construct a config and I didn't want to use, um, I didn't want to use the, the other type so this can have the config that it needs. So let's just create a config then. Hack group config auth is going to come from CFG auth. Now that was already called CFG, wasn't it? So maybe I'll just call this API config. Nice. Cool, right? So again, we can sort of trace um, everything that's happening here. When v1 calls router add, um, eventually it's going to be executing this right here, routes add which in turn constructs this config, oops, and then in turn calls the hacker group routes, and we now have um, middleware attached to that. Things get a little complicated here, right? Let's go back through it. We're gonna call API mux, and one of the things we pass to API mux is the route adder. The route adder um, is implemented right here, where we can add all the routes from the different groups. Eventually, we're gonna have more groups in here. We just have the hacker group in here. So we pass that in. It calls it through the interface here, polymorphism. That in turn is gonna execute this add, and this add will execute these route functions and all the different groups that we have. 